Hello, I'm Leonard Poon, the principal investigator of the Georgia Centenarian Study, which began in 1988. Today, in 2008, we are celebrating our 20th year of research on centenarians. Before we begin this video documentary on our work, I would like to acknowledge the support and funding from the National Institute of Mental Health and the National Institute on Aging for their support over the last 20 years. We also would like to acknowledge the many investigators, collaborators, consultants, and graduate students for participating in this project. Finally, we would like to acknowledge the participation of our centenarians, octogenarians, younger and older adults for making these studies possible. Before I came to University of Georgia, I met one of the pioneers of centenarian study, Belle Boone Beard. And she came to Duke University uh, to do a, a colloquium. And so when I came to interview here at University of Georgia, they talked about a centenarian archive uh, that belonged to the work of Dr. Beard. But one of the things that was asked of me as a director of the Gerontology Center was to put University of Georgia on the map in terms of aging. And so I have thought through what innovative things that we could do that make us somewhat different than any other gerontology center. And uh, so when the opportunity came, um, a, a former colleague of ours came from the Medical College of Georgia uh, to do a kind of a senior postdoctoral fellowship because she was stepping down from acting dean of the College of Nursing. So I thought, well, here's some information in the library from Dr. Beard. Uh, you should go and take a look at it. And she did, and, and she spent a whole week looking at the archive. Um, and then she came back saying that, well, it was a very nice archive, but there's lots of missing data, and because they are single case studies. And perhaps we should start our own centenarian study. And so I thought about it, and I thought, well, that's not bad. This could be one way for the faculty of gerontology at that time to come together and talk about those issues. And so I took her up on it and kind of sent out a notice to, to everyone saying that, well, if you're interested, let's come and talk. And people came and <laughs> took us seriously, thinking that perhaps there's something, you know, that could be something to get started on. My name is Peter Martin. I'm a professor of human development and family studies at Iowa State University, and I've been affiliated with the Georgia Centenarian Study for more than 20 years. Well, Peter, you're one of the originators of the uh, Georgia Centenarian Study. Um, can you share with us how you got started in it? Yes, I uh, came to the University of Georgia in 1985. This was my first faculty position, and I was very fortunate that the Geontology Center also had a new director, Dr. Lenny Poon, and uh, he was looking for a new project to get started and uh, invited a number of faculty to come and join him to brainstorm on this centenarian study, and I was one of the uh, persons invited, and so I've been with the study ever since. Well, as I recall, you lost a Christmas vacation that, <laughs> that day uh, writing the proposal. That's right. My name is Mary Ann Johnson. I'm a professor of foods and nutrition at the University of Georgia. Well, we've been partners for a long time. And could you share with us the, the history of how you got started with the Georgia Centenarian Study? Well, it must have been in late 1987 or early 1988. I was a new assistant professor, busily working away on tenure, uh, locked away in a laboratory on South Campus. I heard that there was a study funded on campus to study 100-year-old people. I thought, well, this would be an interesting kind of research. So I don't know if I contacted you or contacted Peter because he was in my college, and so I'd like to learn more about this study and wondered if you needed a nutritionist. So we met, and the group thought that having a nutritionist on board would be a good idea, and that's how I got started. We were very, very lucky in that at that time, 
National Institute of Mental Health had money to give away. And I have good connections, and they suggested, if you have something worthwhile, this is the time to come and get the money. And, and we did, and we alerted NIMH that's coming, and we got it the first try.